Ernest Allen is a celebrated American sculptor, educator, and indigenous rights activist who lived and worked in Arlington for over 40 years. It's important to acknowledge that the Cyrus Dallin Art Museum is located on the ancestral land of the Massachusetts tribe, and we pay our respects to their descendants who still inhabit this land today. Many fans of Dallin's sculpture do not know that he was also quite an accomplished landscape painter. Over 60 of his paintings have been identified in museums and private collections across the country. This wall features a selection of five paintings that Dallin chose to exhibit alongside his sculpture during a major retrospective of his work at the Boston Art Club in 1934. Four of these paintings depict the landscape around Dallin's home and date to the 1930s. A fifth painting, and the one that we'll be unveiling today, is a rare French landscape that Dallin painted around the year 1890 during his time in Paris as a sculpture student. We do not know of any other surviving paintings from this period. The painting was given to the museum by Dallin's great-granddaughter, Patricia McCabe, who will be sharing her family story later in the program. While we did have the painting on exhibit previously, it had a great deal of age-related condition issues and was in need of restoration. The museum was fortunate to have received a generous grant from the Arlington Cultural Council that enabled us to restore the painting to its original appearance, making it possible for us to unveil it to you today. Dallin painted this lovely farm scene during a visit to auvers sur oise which is a picturesque country village about 17 miles northwest of Paris. For Dallin and his art school friends, visits to Auvers provided much needed respite from the grind of studio life and the crowds and pollution of the city. You may know of auvers sur oise as Vincent Van Gogh's final resting place. In May of 1890, Van Gogh was discharged from a hospital in saint Remy and rented a room in Auvers where he could be closer to his brother Theo. Prior to his death by suicide two months later, Van Gogh had been highly productive painting almost 80 scenes of the countryside in and around Auvers. That's more than one a day. A number of these scenes, like cottages at auvers sur oise bear some resemblance to Dallin's. Van Gogh's and Dallin's time in Auvers is very likely to have coincided, but we have no evidence that the artists came into contact with each other. This seriously beautiful town, as Van Gogh described it in the letter to Theo, attracted many other Barbizon Impressionist and Post-Impressionist painters, including Pierre-Auguste Renoir, Paul Cezanne, Camille Pizarro, and Jean-Baptiste Camille Corot. auvers sur oise was restored by Peter Williams of Peter Williams Museum Services in Boston. The before photo shows the areas where Peter did some spot cleaning to see if the painting could withstand treatment. You can also see that the paint was badly cracked, cupping, and lifting off the surface of the canvas. This happens when a canvas hasn't been kept taut on its stretcher bars. Dallin may have caused this problem himself by rolling the painting up to transport it. He spent a lot of time painting and sketching in France and must have had a great deal of work to take home. Stretchers take up a lot of space and it would have been very difficult to fit them in a suitcase or a trunk for the journey across the Atlantic. After cleaning off the remainder of the surface dirt and varnish, Peter placed the painting on a special vacuum suction table. This apparatus applies even heat and pressure to the painting surface, allowing the paint cracks to close and the painting to flatten to its original width. This photo shows an example of this type of table. Also during this process, a layer of wax was used to bond a new lining or a second canvas to the back of the original in order to stabilize the painting. The table's heating element melts the wax at a temperature of 125 degrees, but the new canvas lining does not actually bond to the old one until the wax returns to room temperature. During vacuum pressing, some of the wax adhesive used for the lining penetrates through the cracks in the paint, pulling a lot of dirt with it onto the surface of the painting. Peter removed that additional dirt and wax and then applied a fresh coat of varnish to the surface. This important final step brings out the depth of the brushwork and gives the canvas a lovely sparkle. 
Today, another bright and beautiful day for Cyrus Allen Art Museum, we celebrate the unveiling of a newly restored work. The oil painting, Village Road, auvers sur oise France, was restored by Peter Williams Museum Services in Boston with a grant from the Arlington Cultural Council, whom we thank for their generosity. Alice Lawton, art critic for the Boston Post, wrote about Dallin's 1934 Boston Art Club exhibit, where he displayed 38 paintings. She said of his style, he succeeds admirably in making his trees stand out and away from the sky, his Indian teepees and forest rocks so painted that one feels that he may walk around and over them, his fences of a sort that one may climb over them, his mountains, towering barriers of solid rock and earth. Wasatch Range in the Native American Gallery and Rocks and Trees on the Salon Wall in the Ideals and Allegory Gallery are perfect examples of Ms. Lawton's description. During the 1930s, many of his paintings were exhibited in art shows, but references to paintings begin earlier in his letters starting in 1881 when he first came to Boston. One of his first was a marine view, and in 1882, we have two references to paintings. Dallin said, this week I have devoted myself to exclusively painting, and I have finished three landscapes, which I hope to sell. And he also painted one of the quarries around Quincy. In 1885, he created an a study of Kelowna, his fiance, in oil color. I shall work on it every Saturday, as that is all the time she has. Another portrait was a full-length figure of a girl to exhibit at the art club in January. We do not have the titles or know the whereabouts of these seven paintings. It would be a wonderful discovery to find them, especially these two rare portraits. Unfortunately, they do not seem to be listed in the Boston Art Club exhibit of 1934. At age 22, when Dallin left Truman Bartlett's studio due to their contentious relationship, his good friend, painter Frederick Bound Hall, invited him to stay at the home of his parents, Gustavus and Susan, who lived in Charlestown. During the several years he stayed at the Hall home, Dallin produced a number of portraits. One such painting is Mrs. Hall's letter, which was purchased at auction after research revealed that the painting resembled a photo in the Dallin family album and was signed with love and good wishes from Mrs. G. V. Hall, 1884. This oil will soon be unveiled. While studying in Paris from 1888 and 1890, Dallin painted Village Road, auvers sur oise France. It is signed, undated, and was exhibited at the Boston Art Club. It's a beautiful village scene, clear blue sky, white puffy clouds, farmhouse and outbuildings, a dirt road with small trees and a fence. In the book, Harvesting the Light, it is said Dallin and his friends, especially those from Utah, continue to go to the country to sketch and paint. They frequented the village of Auvers just outside of Paris. Drawing outdoors on plein air seemed to provide a respite from their rigorous studio grind. In a letter dated September 1880, John B. Fairbanks, noted painter and fellow Utah, said, I never saw any scenery to equal that. It is a little village where peasants live. The old thatch roof cottages and the old walls are as picturesque as can be, and every turn in the road makes a new picture. Over 60 paintings have been identified in the museums, private collections, and within the Dallin family. 38 titles can be attributed to the Boston Art Club January 1934 exhibit. That is entitled Sculpture in Third Dimension Paintings, including Auvers sur Oise. The trifold brochure lists five more paintings displayed at the Dallin Museum.
Black Rock, Salt Lake, Wasatch Range, Rocks and Trees, My Garden, and the Bird Bath. In addition to the paintings mentioned above, the museum also exhibits the tent, Lawrence's house, and two more oils of his backyard. Dallin called his landscapes experimental and three-dimensional because the masses, forms, and textures are built with a thick impasto. He rejected flat painting. He preferred a bold look composing his elements in space so that their three-dimensional quality would be real. His canvases, mostly filled with landscapes, were strewn about his studio, showing off their primitive style in their third dimension technique or his efforts at Impressionism. Although painting was his hobby, Dallin sketched and painted to earn money, to relax, to conceptualize his sculptures, and to record memories of people and places. As far as I know, it was, of course, originally belonged to the Dallins and was probably in their home. Um, once my grandparents died, uh, it probably came to my uh, grandmother and grandfather. My grandmother had helped with the care of Kelowna when she was quite ill before she died after Cyrus's death. And so they received from Cyrus and Kelowna a lot of the objects, and I think the painting was probably one of them. Once my grandmother died, um, I think my mother probably received it. And upon her death, it came to me. I do remember it hanging in my mother's home and I've had it for probably close to 30 years. So it's uh, been in my life for at least 40 years, if not longer. I knew it needed cleaning. It also wasn't being seen being in my house. And so I felt, well, they would probably be able to take better care of it than I could being here in the house. And so I decided I would make the donation to the museum. He built the home, I think it was somewhere in the late 1800s. And then my, my grandparents, his oldest son, Bertram, built their home across the street from them. And so the two families obviously saw a lot of each other. My mother, who was the oldest of the three girls of Bertram and Ruth, spent a lot of her time at her grandparents' home. Uh, I know that Kelowna taught her to read. She was reading by the age of three. And she also taught her French because of the visits that Kelowna and Cyrus had made to France. I'm pretty sure that she was um, a very good French speaker and taught my mother. Mother, as many of the neighborhood children, spent a lot of time in Cyrus's studio. He welcomed the children. He would oftentimes give them pieces of clay to do a little bit of modeling with. So she was in that home a lot and with her grandparents a lot. I think one of the most important things that I received um, was after my grandmother's death. Um, and I'm so grateful that my grandmother was a bit of a squirrel. She hung on to everything. And um, they are original letters starting in 1880 through to, uh, I think the last one's 1887, um, chronicalizing Dallin's first um, years in Boston when he came there as a 19 year old. And they are the letters that he wrote home to his parents. And his mother saved all those letters. Um, I have worked over many years, I've transcribed them and uh, the museum has copies of the transcriptions of the letters. I also have a bust of Bertram, my grandfather, I have a couple of the small statues, reproduction statues of Dallin's. One of my favorites that I have is a huge photograph of the appeal to the great spirit um, that hangs in what I call my sitting room and I really enjoy it a lot. I treasure this painting not only because it's uh, one of Dallin's, but it reminds me of my childhood growing up in my mother's house. It's been with me for a long time. Another reason why is that when I was in college, 
uh, I went on a great adventure with my sister and another friend, and we uh, literally hitched hiked through five European countries. And at one point ended up being dropped off in the middle of Burgundy, France. And there on the corner of this crossroad was a farm that looks very much like the farm in the painting. So when I would look at the painting, I would be reminded of my great adventure. It was a little difficult to give the painting up and to give it to the museum, and that might be possibly one of the reasons why. I think it's really important that this painting be available for the public to see and to enjoy because it adds more dimension to Dallin's talent. Not only was he a very talented sculptor, but he also was a very talented painter and could paint. He, I know, did it as a way of relaxation. In his letters to his mother, he talks about vacationing in Wolfboro, New Hampshire and painting up in Wolfboro. I wish we could find some of those paintings. Um, I have no idea where they are, but uh, I think it just adds that extra dimension to his uh, work and needs to be enjoyed and appreciated. Thank you.